The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good morning, everyone. My name is Ramel Tadai, and I want to welcome you all to today's training. It looks like we have a few more folks who registered for this session, uh, but they haven't joined us yet. So let's go ahead and give them a chance to get settled in, and then we'll get started in just a moment. Thank you so much. All right, good morning again, everyone. For those of you who just joined us, my name is Ramel Tadai, and I'm gonna be walking you through our showing time for the MLS Quick Start training today, courtesy of the Maine Real Estate Information Systems. So just a few notes about the broadcast before we begin training. This webinar, it's a one-way broadcast, so the audience is going to be muted. However, to get audio, you can either listen by phone by dialing in and entering the access code and audio pin, or just select mic and speakers and listen with your headset or through your computer speakers. And I mentioned before that it's a one-way broadcast today, but if you have any questions at any point during our training, feel free to submit your questions in the control panel under questions, uh, as I do have a fellow product training specialist online with us um, who's available to answer questions throughout the training. And finally, we are recording this webinar. So after training is completed for today, everyone is gonna be receiving a link to the video via email, and then you'll be able to watch it at your convenience. So here's our agenda of what we're gonna be going over today. Our goal is to make sure that you're comfortable with accessing the showing time system, setting up and managing your listings and feedback, and creating tours for your buyers with our very own showing cart tool. We also know that this is a unique time right now, so we are gonna highlight something new for you and go over how to set up uh, your listings to accommodate virtual showings. Uh, if you're unable to host in-person showings right now due to stay at home or shelter in place orders, you can certainly use Showing Time for the MLS to host virtual showings. Uh, and you or your office may sub may be subscribed to our other Showing Time products. Uh, but today we're just gonna go over Showing Time for the MLS, which actually works seamlessly with our other showing products. So since we've been live with Showing Time for the MLS in your market, everything that you see in today's training is exactly as shown in Flex MLS. So to access Showing Time for the MLS directly from Flex MLS, once you're logged in, just go ahead and click on the menu button in the top toolbar. And then under the products section, go ahead and click on showing time. Once you click on that, that's gonna automatically authenticate you into the showing time for the MLS home dashboard. Uh, and as you saw, there was no extra login or password required to get to this screen. From here, you're gonna be able to see a snapshot of your activity, uh, such as showings requested on your listings and indicators when you have items requiring attention. Here on the left, this is our site menu, and you can see all these specific tabs which make up our navigation for the site. So we're gonna go ahead and start with the basics of setting up secured showing instructions for your listings as a listing agent. So from the side menu, we're gonna go ahead and click on listing setup. Then from your listing inventory, select the listing that you'd like to edit. And that's going to open up the listing worksheet. So this will be the main page where you can edit all of your settings for a specific listing. We're going to go ahead and start with appointment settings. And the appointment type is the identifier for showing agents that's going to instruct them how to schedule a showing for one of your listings. You'll see that there are three different appointment types here. And appointment required is the default that's selected. So when a showing agent requests a showing online in Flex MLS, 
they have to wait for your confirmation before they can receive access to your listing. So for now, I'm going to show the workflow for this appointment type, Appointment Required. Then we'll scroll down to Access Information and enter those secure instructions for your listing with the access details and alarm details. So for access details, uh, you could select the option of how a showing agent can access your listing, uh, such as if you or your seller is going to be providing access, and then for alarm details, if your listing has an alarm system. And then additional instructions is a text box where you can add additional info that's going to appear after appointment confirmation, such as if there are pets in the home or if you're asking everyone to remove their shoes. And then once you've completed these fields, just remember to click Save Changes at the top. So now we're going to go ahead and move on to online scheduling and how to be notified by the system. And I wanted to point out that when you receive notifications from Showing Time, please do not forward them to anyone. In your email or your text messages, there's a link that you can click on where you can authenticate into the system automatically to take action on any request. This link, it's specifically generated for you. So if you were to forward it to the showing agent, they would have the ability to authenticate into your profile. So please do not forward any notifications. With that, there are four ways that you can be notified from showing time. And the first way is email, which is the default setting for everyone. So as a listing agent, go ahead and click on this button in your email uh, to take action on this request. The second way is text message, and you can receive text messages and reply to confirm or decline that request. The third way is showing voice, which is showing time's very own automated voice call that's gonna walk you through some prompts like dial one to confirm or dial two to decline. And then finally, the fourth way, when you're using the Showing Time mobile app, you can receive push notifications. And tapping on that notification on your smart device, that's going to open up the mobile app. And then you'll be able to take action on the request, as well as view any details of that appointment. So with those in mind, let's go ahead and schedule some showings in FlexMLS. We're going to start as a showing agent requesting a showing on a listing. So from a spreadsheet view, just click into that full report of the listing that you'd like to show. And appearing just above the listing details, there's going to be a showing time clock button uh, that you can click on to schedule that showing. Or you can also click on the showing time link on the right. So we're going to click either of these. And that's going to bring us to the first step to scheduling a showing online. You'll see all the details of that listing that you're requesting to show along with your showing agent profile. So here, you can choose how you're notified for confirmation or for any updates on your request. Just select from any methods of contact by checking the box next to them. Also, please note that you can change these contact details and then any edits that you make in this window, it's gonna be saved for any future requests that you submit. If it's your first time requesting an appointment through showing time, just remember to check this box. And you'll only have to do this once, as again, this setting, it'll be saved for any future requests that you submit. So we'll go ahead and click on Schedule a Single Showing. And that's gonna bring us to the appointment calendar where you can select the date and time to show that property. So any time slots that you see in black, they are unavailable. Time slots in gray are available, but they require a short notice to the listing agent or to the seller. And then time slots that say, request or confirmed, they're actually not for other appointments on this listing. These are actually your own appointments that you have scheduled either for this listing or for any other listings. And this is so that you can see your entire schedule upfront and then you won't overbook yourself when you're scheduling a new appointment. So we're gonna go ahead and select this white time slot to schedule since it's available. And this is the last step of the request where we can indicate the type of the appointment. So we're showing the end time of the appointment, and then which uh, appointment this, excuse me, which buyer that this appointment is for. Uh, so a great thing to note is that the listing agent will never see your buyer's name as this is just an internal reference tool for you um, where you can create a report of all the listings that you've shown to your buyer. And then finally, this text box to ask any questions or if you'd like to provide any information to the listing agent. So we're gonna click yes to submit this request. And this screen is letting us know that the request was submitted successfully, but it's not confirmed yet. 
we're actually still waiting for confirmation from the listing agent, which is the case for any appointment required listings. So this will be typical of occupied listings where the listing agent will confirm that the requested time works for their seller or that seller can confirm or decline the request on their end as well. So now we're just gonna pivot and see the other side of scheduling as the listing agent. So as a listing agent, when you receive a request on one of your listings, you're gonna be notified and all the details of that request is gonna be included in that email, such as the listing info and the date and time of the requested appointment. To take action on this request, just scroll down and click on action required. And that's gonna direct you back into the showing time system. Again, you'll see all the details of the appointment along with the contact info of the showing agent who's requesting to show your listing. So you actually still have that opportunity to give that personal touch and uh, reach out directly. And then scrolling down to the bottom of this, of this request, you'll see the secured showing instructions that you've entered previously. Um, they're already filled in, but you'll be able to edit this as well if you realize the instructions recently changed. And then to confirm this, we're gonna click on confirm appointment. And that's gonna send a confirmation notification to everyone on the listing side, such as yourself as the listing agent, any co-lister working with you, as well as your seller. And then the showing agent that submitted that request, they will also receive confirmation. And notice here that with confirmation, will the showing agent actually have the access details to your listing? Now there's two more ways that listings can be configured to receive showing request. The next setting is go and show. Similar to appointment required, after we click on that schedule a single showing button, we'll go ahead and select that available time on the appointment calendar, complete the request form, and then click on yes to submit the request. But you'll notice this time, since the request setting is go and show, confirmation is automatic, and you're gonna be able to view those access details immediately, and then it'll be sent to any notification type that you've enabled as a showing agent. So as a listing agent, we recommend that you use this request setting for any of your vacant properties or your show anytime properties where your seller is really eager to get as many showings as possible. And then the, finally, the third way to configure your listings is view instructions only. So this setting, it's slightly different than the other two where when you click on schedule a single showing as a showing agent, You'll see there's no appointment calendar and it directly shows instructions on how to access this listing. We recommend that you print these out to take with you on your showing. And as a listing agent, this setting is great for your vacant lot and land, or if you have new construction properties, um, you can add the sales office contact information um, so they can be contacted directly. You'll benefit from this setting since there's really no reason to confirm a time, but it's a nice way to track activity on it. And then by utilizing the listing activity report, you're gonna be able to view how many showing agents viewed the instructions along with their contact info so you can follow up directly. Um, and we'll cover the listing activity report towards the end of our presentation today. So now that we've covered individual requests, I'm gonna show you how to build a buyer tour using our showing cart tool. Similar to online shopping where you can add items to your cart and then check out in one transaction, you can request showings for multiple listings at the same time. So to build a showing cart tour, we're gonna to start in Flex MLS again, clicking into that full detail report of the listing, and then we'll click on the showing time clock button, or again, the showing time link to the right. But this time, once we're in showing time, instead of clicking on schedule a single showing, we're actually gonna click on add to showing cart and save this listing to our shopping cart for later. So we can do this for all the desired listings in Flex MLS and then add them to any existing buyer tours. So I'm gonna go ahead and start a new tour by clicking add to showing cart. Then we'll go ahead and select the date we want the tour to occur, add our buyer's name for reference and then click okay. And now that listing that we selected in Flex MLS, it's now appearing in our showing cart. So this is the screen that we'll use to build the tour get driving directions, and send a tour list to our buyer. Of course, it doesn't make sense if we only had this one listing to show, so let's go ahead and add a few more to the list. If you know listings by their listing IDs, you can go ahead and enter them in this text box up here. Just separate each of them by a comma, no spaces, and then click go. 
And that's going to add all those listings simultaneously to your cart. Another way to add listings is going to be through Flex MLS itself. So from that spreadsheet view, just select those listings that you want to add in by checking them off on the left. Then once you've got them all selected, click on the three dots at, at the top, excuse me, at the top right hand corner of the spreadsheet and then click on showing cart. That's going to add all those selected listings from that spreadsheet right into your showing cart. Also, if you know listings by their address directly, you can add them in the showing cart screen as well. So to do this, we're going to click on add listing stop. Then search a listing to add by its address. And then once you find the correct listing from the results, just go ahead and click on it. And now that listing is appearing in your tour. If you ever want to add a non-listing stop, like your office or a coffee shop to meet up with your buyers before the tour, you can do that by clicking Add Other Stop, entering the address and a location name or description, and then click Add Stop. So now your office is appearing in the tour and we can move it to the top of the list. But before we rearrange this tour, I wanted to show you that you're going to have driving directions being created for you. And you can access those turn by turn directions by clicking this button right here. This feature is great as it shows you the drive time between each showing. So it's very helpful to factor in when you're selecting those appointment times. So back to rearranging listings, we can drag and drop them in any order that we desire. So let's go ahead and drag and drop the office to the top since uh, we mentioned that we wanted to meet there uh, with our buyers. So we'll click on it, slowly drag it to the top of the list. And now our tour is gonna start at our office. So we could do the same process with the other listings if we know a good route. But uh, I actually recommend that once you've got that first stop set, just click on Smart Route at the bottom of your showing cart. And that's gonna utilize our Smart Route feature where the system will calculate the best route for you based on those driving directions. And then once you have that tour route set, the last thing to do is select a start time and an end time for each of these listings. We'll go ahead and click on pick a time next to that first listing. Then select the type of the appointment, uh, add a start time, end time, add any notes, and then click save. And now that we've selected the appointment time for the first listing, Go ahead and do the same for the remaining listings. And then all of your appointments you'll see will line up nicely on the right-hand side. So uh, the little blue bars, they definitely give you a little advantage by letting you know how much time is gonna overlap between each showing. So you can adjust that accordingly, uh, especially with those drive times. And with that, like online shopping, we're ready to check out. And you can request to show all of these listings at the same time by clicking send request at the top. That's going to send a request simultaneously for all those listings. And you can see that our appointment status column in the center, it's now changed. So the go and show listings, they were confirmed instantly. The appointment required listings, they're still waiting for confirmation from those listing agents. And then the view instructions only listing is already providing a link to view instructions on how to access the listing. If there's ever a point you need to walk away from your tour as you're waiting for the rest of those appointments to be confirmed, you can always return to your buyer tours by clicking on showing cart under the showings tab in the side menu. Then from your showing cart calendar, select the tour that you want to return to. And that's gonna bring you back to the showing cart screen. So in our example here, we can see that all of our requests have now been confirmed and we're ready to take our buyer on tour. And we recommend that you provide this info to your buyer as a tour itinerary, uh, which you can either print out by clicking the printer button at the top or send as an email by clicking the envelope button. That's gonna open this window to compose a message to your buyer and then you would click send. The link in that email that's sent to your buyer is gonna look similar to this. So all the listings together with the date and time of the tour, your agent information, and then a map of the tour route. So now we're gonna go ahead and look at your agent settings via agent setup. So to get there, we'll start in our uh, home dashboard view and click on edit profile at the top, or you can click on your photo and name in that side menu. Once you're in your profile, you can always upload a new headshot by clicking on the upload arrow, select that new photo from your computer and save it. 
And then in the profile basics section, we recommend that you check and confirm that your contact details are correct, especially as this is where you'll indicate a mobile phone number so that you can enable text messaging as an option uh, for any of your notification. Scrolling down, this section is your preferences as a listing agent. So these will be the default settings applied to your listings when they go live. Uh, we recommend that you adjust these settings for whatever your average listing is like. So for example, you can see here that the default appointment mode, it's set to appointment required, but if you typically work with vacant properties, then we recommend that you change this mode to go and show. Right here, you can select how you're notified of a request by default. Just select any combination of these notification options by checking and unchecking these boxes. And you also have options for feedback requests. So after showing agents request a showing for one of your listings, they're gonna automatically receive a request for feedback from you. And then you can edit those settings about the feedback request right here. If you do change any default settings for listing agent preferences and then click Save Changes, this alert window is gonna pop up asking you to proceed with some options. So this first option, Save New Defaults, Update All Listings. This is gonna update all of your listings that are currently active and live uh, with those settings that you've adjusted. It's quick and very handy, especially as you're preparing to use showing time for the MLS. Uh, but if you don't wanna override any listings, just go ahead and click on Save New Defaults. And again, this option, it won't affect any listings that are already active, only your new incoming listings. And then as a showing agent, you'll have some default settings that you can adjust as well, such as that default appointment type that you'll typically be scheduling for, like showings, and the default duration of that appointment. So since we've been live with Showing Time for the MLS, everyone is able to download the Showing Time mobile app and access the system through your smart device. So I'm gonna show you an, uh, the process on how to do just that and register your device. So from our edit profile screen that we're just in, you would just scroll down to mobile app access, then click on send authentication link. That's gonna send you an email and you would need to open up that email on your smart device, such as your smartphone or your tablet, and then tap on download the app. That's gonna direct you to the correct page to download from the Apple App Store or the Google Play Store. And then once the app has been installed, do not open the app, but actually go back to this email on your device, scroll down, and then you'll see the second option is log in. Once you tap on log in, that's gonna automatically authenticate you into the showing time system, and then you don't have to worry about retrieving a code or a password as your email address will already be registered and recognized by showing time. So looking at the mobile app interface here, you can open up that side menu by tapping on the hamburger button and see all the features that are available. You'll notice that the majority of the features that we've gone over so far, they also exist in the mobile app. So this is just a great way to keep the showing time system with you while you're out in the field as it's going to be able to sync your activity across the app and the desktop site very seamlessly. So now we'll go ahead and just circle back to the remainder of our listing settings. So to get there from your home dashboard uh, view, go ahead and click on listing setup in the side menu. Then from your listing inventory, select the listing that you'd like to edit. And then once you're in the listing worksheet, you're gonna see under appointment settings that there's an option to select a feedback template. So this will be the questionnaire that's sent to showing agents after they show one of your listings. And you can edit from a selection of templates, or if you wanna customize your own template for a specific listing, property type, or for a price point, you can always start one from scratch. So to do all this, we're gonna go ahead and click on feedback in the slide menu. Then just under that, form design and settings. And then right at the top, feedback form. So from here, you can customize your feedback template any way that you like, add or delete questions, edit any existing ones, or uh, just start from scratch. So to create a new template, you would just click on create new template, and then go ahead and select the type of response for each question that you'd like to add in. All we really recommend is that you name each of your templates so that they're just easier to identify when you're selecting from the drop-down menu. So back to listing setup, 
you'll notice that there's this menu at the very top where you can toggle between your different listings. And this is so that you'll be able to navigate through each listing worksheet without leaving the listing setup view. Here, you can change the appointment type at the listing level. And again, the feedback template that we just went over, go ahead and select the template that you'd like to use for those feedback requests. And then the main thing to look at is gonna be this contact section. This is where you can edit or add your co-listing agents and sellers. So for co-listing agents, they're gonna be pulled automatically from FlexMLS and will already be present in this section. However, this person doesn't have to be a formal co-lister. It could be a team member, your assistant, or anyone else in your office that's helping you with scheduling. Just go ahead and add that person as a contact. They'll have their own row with their contact info. And then from there, they'll actually be able to help you uh, and see this listing uh, when they authenticate into their own showing time profile. So really handy, especially if you're on a team. And then for sellers, just click on Add Owner Occupant. Then click on Add New. Enter your seller's contact info and then click Save. So once you've done that, you'll see that your seller is appearing in the contact section and you can select how they interact with the system. So the first column here is how to notify them of new appointment requests and then how those requests can be confirmed. And then the second column is how to notify them for confirmations or for any cancellations. And note that when you're checking for your seller to receive emails here, you're actually gonna be saving your seller's email address. From there, they're gonna receive an email on your behalf from Showing Time and then have the option to gain access to their seller experience called My Home by Showing Time. It's an application of features available to sellers where they can actually create their own account, see all the showing activity for their home, view any feedback that you've shared with them, and if they have multiple homes for sale, they can pull up those individual profiles separately uh, to view each of those datas. So again, this application, it's optional for your sellers, but as you can see, it's just a really nice way for them to be kept in the loop about their home for sale. So back to the listing worksheet, the last thing I wanna show you in here is appointment restrictions. So this section, this is actually affecting the blacked out and grayed out time on the appointment calendar from earlier. And as you can see, you can set the re required and suggested lead time, which will appear as gray on the calendar. Select if you allow overlapping appointments and then add restrictions. So with showing restrictions that will block out specific days and times on the appointment calendar, uh, so for example, if your seller has asked for no showings on Tuesdays from noon until four, you can add that restriction and then showing agents won't be able to request for that day and between those times. And finally, for our access information that we've covered previously, will not be sent out until you have confirmed the appointment. So on to the listing activity report. This is the log that will show you all the activity on your listing since it went live. To access it in the listing worksheet, just click on listing activity report in that sub menu. And then in this report, you're gonna be able to see your showings per month, a graphical summary of feedback that you've received, as well as those individual feedback responses. And note that this feedback, it's not publishing to your seller automatically as you always have the option to review it first. Then after your review, you can decide if you wanna publish it to your seller. And then scrolling down here in the listing activity details, you'll be able to see all the showing activity and then follow up with those showing agents as needed. So I mentioned earlier that for any view instructions only listings that you have, you're going to be able to see here which showing agents access those instructions along with their contact info and the date and time they access the information as well. So really great um, for follow up, uh, especially um, as mentioned for those view instructions only listings. If you want to share this report with your seller, just click on homeowner version in the sub menu. And then notice here that the homeowner version is very similar to your version. However, the only feedback that's displayed in these two sections is feedback that you've published after your review. And notice here in the listing activity details, they will not display any showing agent information. So you don't have to worry that your seller will be able to view that. 
So we're reaching to the end of our training for today, and we wanted to take a moment to talk about how you can use Showing Time for the MLS to host your virtual showings. We know during this unique time that you may be staying home and you're unable to show your listings in person, but this is how you can use Showing Time to host video tours on your listings. So one thing you could do if your seller is able to is to host a live video meeting via Zoom, Microsoft Teams, or any other video sharing service uh, to show the property. Uh, so you can add instructions for that video meeting in your access details uh, so that I mentioned before. So in the listing worksheet here, we're gonna adjust these access details. Um, and with this example here, notice how I've adjusted them uh, with the how the agent can access the home to other and added the phrase live virtual video tour in the access notes. And then below in additional instructions, you can add more specific details about that virtual showing. So for example, you can add that the seller will be hosting the video tour live or that if it'll be recorded, um, any details about the time of the appointment or the date, and then the, the link to the actual video tour. So what's nice is that any links that you add in this additional instructions box, it's gonna be hyperlinked in the uh, confirmation email. So the showing agent that receives it, they'll be able to just click on the link from their email and join the tour or view the tour. Another way you can leverage the system for virtual showings is gonna be through messages. So in the side menu, once you click on messages, uh, you can chat with the showing agent directly to provide them any links or additional information they would need for their virtual showing. And then finally, another great option is by adding attachments in the listing worksheet. So attachments are great because you can add a disclosure form or any additional information to the listing. So after the appointment's been confirmed, that showing agent, they'll actually receive all these attachments automatically. So to do this, we're gonna click on uh, add remove under the attachments button. Then go ahead and upload your document with that choose file button. And in this example here, I've attached the floor plan, but again, you can certainly add any disclosure forms that you'd like the buyer's agent or the buyer to sign before they enter the home. Uh, if they're still, if you're still allowing in-person showings or uh, anything else that has to deal with the virtual showing. And then for any office level users with us today, like our managing brokers or administrative staff, you're gonna have access to the office setup tab in the side menu. And then once you click on branding, you can upload your office's logo and set the trim color for any emails that go out on behalf of your agents. To preview what the email will look like, just click on preview email. And here in this example, you'll see that the preview is the trim color. Uh, excuse me. You'll see that the email header is the trim color along with the logo that's uploaded for the office. And then finally, if after today's session you have any questions at all, you can always click on help and support in the side menu. And we have videos and step-by-step -step tutorial articles that you can search through that's going to walk you through the system. If you ever need to reach out to our member support team, they're available to help you out seven days a week and their contact information and hours of operation can be found right here. If you do contact them, we highly recommend to contact them through live chat as that's gonna connect you with a technician instantly where you can share your screen for troubleshooting and then coordinate a phone call if needed. All right, I wanna thank you all for your time this morning. And just as a reminder, we did record today's training session. So in a few hours, everyone will receive a, an email to a link of this recording. Uh, I do see we had a couple of questions that we were able to answer uh, throughout the presentation, but if you have any more, uh, please feel free to add them now and we'll go ahead and get it answered for you. However, if you're not gonna stick around to read any of the answers, remember that showing time for the MLS, it's already live for your uh, association. So be on the lookout for those scheduling buttons and links. Again, thank you all for your time again. Happy scheduling and stay safe.
All right. Thank you for your time again, everyone. It uh, looks like we didn't have any more questions uh, after the session was completed. So if you have any more that you forgot to ask, uh, just feel free to reach out to us via live chat at showingtime.com backslash live dash chat. Again, thank you all so much. Have a great rest of your day and week. Thank you.